Hello, Wonder Hussy here at a place called the Oasis of Mara. Okay, it sounds like something out of Lord of the Rings, but it's basically just what it sounds like. A lush green oasis of palm trees and mesquite bushes in the middle of an otherwise totally barren sun-baked landscape. Now, I guess originally the Serrano Native American tribe lived here at this oasis in the desert and they farmed corn and beans and squash and pumpkins and, well, it was probably a pretty nice little desert paradise. And I guess apparently the reason they came here in the first place is a medicine man told them that if they lived here, well, they would thrive and they would have many baby boy children. And moreover, for every baby boy that was born to them, they were supposed to plant a palm tree. And so I guess the first year that the Serranos lived here, they had 29 baby boys, so they planted 29 palms. And so when the first white man rolled in these parts in the 1850s, well, he saw this line of 29 palm trees growing in this oasis in the middle of this baking, broiling, inhospitable desert. And he figured that would be a good name for the settlement. And believe it or not, it has stuck ever since the 1850s. It's still called 29 Palms. Nowadays, it's a city of about 25,000 people that's probably best known for its ginormous Marine Corps base and the fact that it's near the entrance to Joshua Tree National Park. But it all started here at this little oasis. And I thought that was pretty interesting because I always wondered where the name for 29 Palms came from. Well, now we both know. Anyway, unfortunately, there aren't 29 palm trees left at this poor, ravaged oasis anymore. And that's because once the first white prospectors came to this area and started mining up in the mountains back there by what's today Joshua Tree National Park, well, they needed timbers <laughs> to build their head frames and such. And, well, they also needed water for their mining operations, so the spring pretty much got pumped dry, and almost all the palm trees look like they've either been chopped down or burned down. But I just think it's kind of interesting that the original Oasis of Mara still stands today, more or less, right in the middle of the bustling metropolis of 29 Palms. I mean, I don't know how long this little green strip is, but uh, one end is right here at the, there's a Joshua Tree Visitor Center. And then there's kind of like this little walking trail and, well, I guess you might call it a sort of green belt, although it's really not that green. Uh, the other end of it is at this super fancy hotel. Okay, this is the 29 Palms Inn. And I guess uh, that oasis of Mara stretches all the way this is like the, I think the western end of it, and it goes all the way over to that visitor center over there. And apparently there's some kind of pool at this fancy hotel that contains pretty much everything that's left of the oasis. Um, to be fair, it wasn't all caused by miners pumping it down. Um, I guess there has also been a lot of earthquake activity in this area, and supposedly that did something to the water table. Either way, <laughs> the oasis ain't what it once was but the name 29 Palms stuck around. And actually this does look like a pretty nice place to stay. And it's not really that expensive. I looked it up online. I think you can get a room for around eh, 225 bucks a night. So I might just have to splurge on one of my visits here to the beautiful metropolis of 29 Palms. That's right, I will be back to 29 Palms. As weird as that sounds, I actually really like it here really unpretentious compared to like, well, if you've ever been to Joshua Tree or Yucca Valley, it seems like all the LA hipsters and artists kind of colonized, well, Yucca Valley, Joshua Tree, but then the farther east you go, sort of the less glamorous it becomes. So by the time you get here to 29 Palms, well, it still has kind of a working class grit and appeal. You know what I mean? Like, you do see the occasional hipster. Uh, the gentrification process has begun. But for the most part, it's still pretty unpretentious and cool and actually weirdly affordable, at least by California standards. 
I was looking at some real estate listings while I was researching this video, and you can get a pretty decent two bedroom house for eh, $300,000. And depending on where you live, well, that's either crazy unreasonable or very reasonable. Now, even though the first white man discovered 29 Palms back in the 1850s, it didn't actually become a town until much later. In fact, there wasn't even a post office here until I think 1927. So it's pretty young. It's less than a hundred years old. And it's actually one of those rare instances where a town is growing. You know how most places you go, everyone's moving out of these small towns into the big city. Well, I guess in the grand tradition of the desert Southwest, 29 Palms is one of those places where the population gets higher every year because who wouldn't want to live here? But actually speaking of the post office, kind of an interesting fun fact about the name 29 Palms. Well, I guess originally they wrote it as just the numerals, two nine palms, 29 palms, which is a lot faster and easier than writing 29 palms. You know, it's like when you have to write a check. I'm so lazy, I hardly ever have to write checks anymore, but when you have to write out, well, like if I'm making a payment to the IRS and I have to write 129, like, well, anyway, the reason they had to change it from two nine palms when they got the post office, Somehow that was too confusing for people to figure out. <laughs> people were always sending stuff to Box 29, Palms, California. So they changed the name of the town to be written out in longhand 20 9 Palms back, oh gosh, probably in the 20s or 30s. But then that was a problem because apparently the post office has some regulation where the names of places can't be three words and 20 9 Palms counted as three words. So they had to make it into this one long word, 29 palms. And that's why when you're driving around and you see the freeway signs, it's all spelled out the long way. Anyway, even though the post office wasn't established until 1927, there's actually a long history of ranching, mining, and settlement by the white man in this area. And they commemorate it here in 29 Palms with all these murals. It's actually kind of famous for having, well, I don't know if they have 29 murals or more than that, but there's murals painted on the side of a bunch of buildings out here. I mean, you can see this one here is a tribute to this Desert Queen Ranch, which was one of the first big ranches Oh, I think it's out in, uh, uh, in what's uh, Joshua Tree Park nowadays. Yeah, it says right here. Bill Keys arrived in 1910 as the caretaker of the once prosperous Desert Queen Mine in what is now Joshua Tree National Park. Now that's a pretty nice, shiny new mural. I'm not sure that's actually one of the original 29 Palms murals, but this one up here surely is. <laughs> you can tell by the sort of sun bleached paint and this kind of slightly terrifying looking man who apparently was named Jack Cones, the Flying Constable. The Flying Constable, okay? It says his real name was Orville Jackson Cones, but folks around here just called him Cactus Jack because they say he could make a tin can dance in the sand with his six shooter. Apparently he was a really good aim. In 1929, him and his wife Clara homesteaded in 29 Palms, and then in 1932, he became the constable, which was a title he held for the next 28 years. So basically, I guess he flew this Piper J3 Cub from his private airfield and patrolled over 2,800 square miles of rugged desert. Landing on dirt roads, Jack would rescue stranded travelers, transport the sick and injured, or serve a warrant on some bad actor, as he used to say. Nowadays, we say bad ombre. Then it says flying at sagebrush level, he would airdrop supplies to those in need or track down outlaws on the run. So apparently he did a lot of good and kept the peace here. And well, that's how come he has this awesome, mildly creepy mural. <laughs> there he is flying around. Looks like he's, well, it looks like he's not tracking down an outlaw there. He must be dropping supplies or something, but uh, I don't know, man. Maybe they just didn't have very good dental hygiene back then. <laughs> Well, I guess nobody really had great dental hygiene back in those days. Anyway, there's a ton of these murals all over 29 Palms. In fact, I would say the only thing there's more of in 29 Palms than murals is barber shops.
That's right, because this is the home of the 29 Palms Marine Corps base. Uh, I didn't realize this, but if you're a Marine, I guess you're responsible for keeping your hair cut short. You know how you get to get that military buzz cut if you're in the armed forces? Well, I just sort of figured they would do that for you, but apparently not. You have to get your hair cut at your own expense. And I'm here to tell you, there's like, there must be a hundred barber shops in this town. And all the other businesses that go along with a giant Marine Corps base. Oh my God, it's like a sausage fest in this town. <laughs> if you're into 18 year old guys, get here ASAP. <laughs> Man, there sure is a lot of testosterone in this town. <laughs> anyway, look, here's a, well, here's something that brings both of the proud traditions of 29 Palms together. A mural about the Marines. Okay, apparently this mural uh, represents on 21 March 2003 when the 1st Marine Division crossed from Kuwait and began Operation Iraqi Freedom. Remember that? Operation Iraqi Freedom? There they are. Saving a uh, Iraqi? There they are, down in the trenches. There they are, toppling that infamous statue of Saddam Hussein. Or excuse me, Saddam Hussein. Okay, here's the world famous 29 Palms Marine Corps base. This is why there's all these adorable 18 year old guys running around town getting their hair cut. And well, this is probably a big part of why the population of the town of 29 Palms got to be 25,000 people. I mean, this is the biggest Marine Corps base in the world. Uh, I think there's something like 8,500 people just living on the base. And you can see how big it is. I mean, it basically sprawls across the whole desert, beautiful desert mountains in the background. And well, I guess they train Marines here for combat in places like Iraq and Afghanistan because that's basically the same climate. I mean, I'm here on April, Third, and it's friggin hot and dry and dusty just like it is in Iraq and Afghanistan so what better place to get these boys ready for the joys they're going to face once they get shipped overseas apparently there's even a whole uh, a combat town they built out there to look like a Middle Eastern village with like a mosque and I according to Wikipedia they even have a uh, native role-playing actors and then there's this one section of it called ied alley like improvised explosive device alley i mean they have to train these guys for what they're going to expect when they go over there and well <laughs> what better place to do it than out here in the middle of this blighted sun blasted baking godforsaken desert Okay, so obviously I couldn't go on base, but I drove up to where the gate is, which if I zoom in, you can see is right there under that little shade cloth. And then, well, if I look over, if I pan over this way, it looks like there is some kind of armored vehicle parked there. Maybe that's the perimeter of the base. What do I know? I just parked my car at the end of this dirt road and well, I'm standing on my roof trying to get a better peek. Anyway, I just think this Marine Corps base is weirdly fascinating. I mean, I actually, well, little known fact, I actually grew up on a military base myself over in Germany, and it sure didn't look anything like this. I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel like it might be slightly grim to be stationed here. I don't know. I mean, it's the biggest Marine Corps base in the world, so I guess it's something of an honor to be stationed here, but golly, I mean, <laughs> What are you supposed to do in your downtime? Well, one thing you could do in your downtime, well, that is if you weren't too busy getting massages, smoking hookah, and getting tattoos, well, you could go hiking in Joshua Tree National Park, which is just right over there where I started this video by that Oasis of Mara. Well, that's one entrance and it stretches on, oh gosh, for miles and miles and miles. And there's all kinds of beautiful hiking and rock climbing and well, you don't need me to tell you about Joshua Tree. And speaking of Joshua Tree, this is where the band U2 stayed when they were recording their famous album, The Joshua Tree. Okay, remember the U2 album, The Joshua Tree? Huge album from the 80s, had a ton of hits on it. Well, for some reason, they stayed at this very humble motel right here in 29 Palms when they were recording the music for it. Uh, fun fact, 
the iconic photo of you two standing in front of a Joshua tree wasn't even taken down here. It wasn't taken anywhere near 29 Palms. It was shot up uh, outside Death Valley, just outside the western edge of Death Valley off California Highway 190. Matter of fact, I made a video all about it. You can go to the site of that Joshua tree. It's since died and fallen over, but fans from all over the world come out and put uh, leave relics and souvenirs and tributes to YouTube. It's kind of cool. I'll put the link to the video up there. Check it out if you're interested. But that's nowhere near where we are now. And that's just one more kind of quirky, interesting thing about the very quirky and very interesting town of 29 Palms. Anyway, there you have it. A little bit of the fascinating and quirky history of the town of 29 Palms. And while there might not be 29 palm trees growing at the oasis of Mara anymore, there's still plenty of palm trees in town and plenty of other interesting stuff to do right here in another one of my favorite places in the Mojave Desert.